guys, welcome back to SDG and welcome to 2022. The channel's almost two years old now. About uh, springtime, it will turn two. And it got me thinking back on kind of where we've been and where we are now, some of those early videos. And if you haven't seen it, little FYI, the third video that I ever made on this channel was how to build a four cup fluid bed. Um, it's been a great video. A lot of guys have, have appreciated it and built their own. It's pretty cool. So as I have thought about how to launch kind of 2022, I thought, how about another fluid bed build? Only we're going from four to eight. Now why eight? One, because it's fun. I mean, who wouldn't want an eight stall, eight cup fluid bed? So it's going to be cool and it's going to be fun to use. I don't think that I'll ever use all eight cups at the same time. Although I do fully intend to test to see if my aquarium pump that I use has enough push power to run all eight. So we'll definitely do that. I got a lot more powder paint these days and I'm like, I'm running out of room to keep it all. And if I had four more cups on my fluid bed, then it makes four more spots where I can store stuff. And I thought, you know what? There were some design um, quirks with the first one that I needed to address. Not really big ones, just little. Uh, and I also want to have one video where we have a fluid bed build that includes the manifold, that air regulator. So. I do have that now. There's two videos right now. That third video I was talking about how to build a fluid bed. I think it's how to upgrade your fluid bed. And then at a subsequent video a couple months later, I added a one inch PVC as a regulator or a manifold that helps um, regulate the air to each cup. So I thought it'd be helpful to build it all in one fell swoop so you guys can see it. And hey, it's going to be fun. I'm going to change camera angles here and show you all the materials that we're going to go through. It's a lot of the same stuff. I'm not going to be diving into, you know, B-roll on me cutting stuff and drilling stuff. You guys can handle that, right? You guys know what to do. I'll show you the materials. I'll show you the steps. I'll show you what I use as filter materials on the cups themselves and uh, maybe some stuff that I've learned along the way. And you guys can go build one on your own or hey, just enjoy the ride. Let's jump in. Spoiler alert, this is kind of what I had in mind. Of course, it's obviously not finished. We don't have all the connections in place, but this is the mocked up version of what uh, I'm thinking will work very well as an eight stall or eight cup fluid bed. What you are seeing is a 24 inch by 10 inch piece of wood. You're going to need two inch PVC that we will cut for both the base where the air uh, intake is as well as where the cups or what the cups are made out of. Um, you're going to need two inch couplers as well. So make sure you pick up some couplers. The valves are shark bites. So a lot of guys on the other video told me a couple different times um, they could find brass cheaper, brass fittings cheaper. If you can do so, great. I looked around everywhere I could find and every valve that would work in this setup was about $10 a piece. One quarter OD shark bites. It needs uh, 10 or eight of those rather. Got eight of those, one for each cup. We're gonna need some um, clear silicone to put around the holes to keep the air in. I'm gonna need a quarter inch drill bit to drill our holes. I'm gonna need quarter inch standard aquarium tubing. We will need, I'm going to use anyway, Gorilla Glue. So there was also some questions from the last video. If you use glue to um, attach these guys to the wood, is it durable? Does it last? And I can tell you, I thought I was going to be able to reuse four of the cups from the old um, unit. And that definitely was not the case. I had to take a mallet to it to get them off and they tore up the, the wood. So yes, it definitely works well. And I'll be using that again because it's been a proven deal for me. We're gonna need eight of these test caps. These are gonna go underneath and that's what we're going to 
um, glue the edge down and solidify everything to the wood. So this is just rubber gasket maker. I got it in the plumbing section at Lowe's. It comes in squares about that big. I got it from a, for a different purpose, but it works really well because what I needed for this manifold, right? This is the manifold I was talking about. That is a one inch PVC with round caps on both ends. Um, we'll glue, glue those in place as well, but to attach it to the board, I used these, I guess they're electrical, whatever, and it was just a little bit too big. So a little bit of this rubber underneath, it goes right over top of the cap and makes for a perfect little snug fit and a drill. You're going to need a drill. So this is probably pretty self-explanatory just by looking at the unit. You can kind of figure out what's going on. But for the sake of clarity, um, I bought a two-foot piece of two-inch PVC. And each one of these bases, again, this is going to be the bottom piece where the air will go in. These are two inches um, tall each. In the previous design, I had, I think, a three-inch piece, then a coupler, then another two or three inch piece on top of that. And then I had the, um, the final cups attach. And a buddy of mine who was making one of these of his own said, Hey, why, why the extra coupler? And that doesn't, is that really necessary? Am I missing something? The reason why I did that originally, and it was wrong on my part was because I thought that the coupler piece and that whole unit actually was going to come off um, and store the paint. And that wasn't the case. I had the wrong place in my head of where the filter was going to go. So because the filter goes between that piece and the coupler, you don't need an extra coupler on the bottom. So that is a difference from the first video, but two inch pieces, a two inch piece of PVC on the, um, on the board itself. Again, here's that test cap. So we'll put this in the bottom. And we'll, we'll glue that to it to seal it up nice and tight. That'll go on the board. And then we'll drill a hole uh, with that quarter inch drill bit right here to put our tubing in and seal that up with the silicone. So these are two, two and a half inch long pieces of that quarter inch standard silicone I was showing you earlier. Um, the first piece is going to go from the manifold to the valve. And then the second piece will go from the valve to the cup. So I found uh, in just preliminary measurements, 10 inch piece of wood, the valves in the middle, the manifold is about an inch or so up. So uh, it seems just right. Those cups are pretty darn close to the back edge and it fills it in pretty nicely. So gonna need uh, eight times two, so 16 of these guys. You'll also need about a two foot, at least for me anyway, a two foot piece of the same tubing. What we're gonna do with this is we're actually going to drill a hole in that end cap on this far right side. The, the tubing will go in, we'll seal it up permanently there. So when I store this, I just wrap this around and it stores, right, the tubes in like that. I bring it around and I store it just like that up on a shelf or whatever. Whenever I need to use it, this is the business end that then goes to my aquarium pump. Um, and that puts air inside the manifold. And then as each of these valves is opened up, there's a even distribution of air or at least more even. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better um, distribution of air so that the pressure on this side is roughly the same as the pressure on this side. For the cups themselves, or so the cups that are on top with the coupler, those hold the paint. You can see there's my watermelon. I think that one's a June bug. Some of these are empty because I have some new paint to put into it. But um, super convenient because they'll just pop right off. The bottom piece will be glued to the wood and stay there permanently. The top just pops off so you can swap out paints as much as you want. Those cups are made of the same two inch PVC. This is three inches. Um, I find that to be a good height overall. So three inch with the coupler, right? But between these two, you've got to have a filter 
so that um, as the air comes through, the air is distributed, as well as obviously the paint needs to be held in there. So what I use for um, a filter, and this is largely debated, trust me, um, but I just use a good old fashioned brown paper bag like you used to take your school lunch in. Um, I know a lot of guys use copy paper, some will use coffee filters or double, triple coffee filters. Some guys will go to TJ's something or other and buy kind of synthetic vision, versions of the filter that are made for this. I've tried most, never tried the, the TJ's thing because they're kind of expensive, but I've tried most and at the end of the day, a good old paper bag was my go-to. I think it has a lot to do with the pump that is pushing the air, how powerful that is. I think it has to do with the setup uh, of your fluid bed, um, how big the cups are. I mean, all of that is going to play into it. So you do you for me. And what I'm going to show you is um, a brown paper bag. To get this, right, pretty simple. One quick note, though, because this is the kind of mistake I would make. I don't want to take this and, right, I don't want to take that and make a circle out of it, tra trace the circle on this guy, because then I'm not going to have enough. I want a little bit of extra so that as it goes into that, see how there's overlap? As it goes into it, the edge is going to get pushed up. It's going to get pushed up like that inside of this coupler. So I use the coupler as the um, as the piece to, to trace around, right? And then as I put this on top, you can see I have a little bit of overlap all the way around. I center that and then down it goes. Of course, I've got to put it down to do it properly, but you get the idea, right? And what that's going to do is it pushes down in it's going to push these edges up and it's going to give you a nice, clean, um, airtight seal. And then lastly, each one of those cups, right? You want to keep the air, or not air, but you want to keep the liquid out of it, any kind of trace um, moisture in the air or whatever. So make sure that you have a test cap or some other way to cap them off. And then convenient, just write the paint color right there on top. I've already got underneath of here little marks for where the cups are going to sit as well as marks along this um, manifold. Those marks are where I'm going to um, uh, drill into that with the quarter inch drill bit, make room for the tubing. Uh, for those curious, this works out to be about three inches apart, each one. So um, the middle of each cup is roughly three inches from the next, which will line everything up. All right, guys, we are all drilled out. You can see all of my holes are ready to go. That's about a half inch from the bottom. Uh, I thought that was a good in-between spot. It gives room for the coupler to come down on top without impeding it. And it also isn't so close to the bottom where you stand the risk of uh, cracking the bottom. So about a half inch up from the bottom. And then on the other side, I'll show you that here in a minute. We've got all eight holes drilled. And then we've got one that's actually in uh, put together, mocked up here so you can see what it looks like before we glue everything down. All right, forgive the shakiness here. Let's see if I can get around, show you guys some of the, so there's the holes on the other end. All right. Each of these, as I mentioned before, is already marked out so I can get it right where I need to. And then all the way around, give you a close up on this guy. So you can see it goes, I don't know, quarter inch or so into the cup. Of course, we can't see it here, but it goes about a quarter inch in to there as well. I'm actually going to take the silicone and everywhere that I can, I'm going to silicone on the inside just so that it's not all gloopy and nasty on the outside. So we need to put the caps on the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna use um, super glue for that. Get those all um, solidified and glued to the board. And then we'll put the silicone on the inside to seal up um, the air around the tube. 
Unfortunately, I can't get inside of the manifold and do that. So we're going to have uh, gloopy stuff or try to make it as clean as I can. But we'll have silicone on the outside on this end. But it works. That's the way that it was set up last time. Got the, all the caps are glued on. Those are drying now. So that's taken care of. I also went ahead and glued this end cap on the manifold on the left side. Nothing to worry about there. On the right hand over here though, it's not on yet because that's going to take the, um, the tube. So I drilled out a quarter inch hole, put the tube in, went ahead and if you can see that real well, but there's um, some silicone in there that's drying around that tube. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a public service announcement. Adam is not a handyman. Yes, indeed. I told you wrong, gentlemen. So this stuff here, this is the standard tubing, aquarium tubing. Mentioned it at the beginning, cut it all to pieces, blah, blah, blah. I noticed when I was putting it in that it was a little looser than I remember it being. And the reason for that, my memory came back and I realized that I believe this stuff is seven thirty seconds of an inch. So I tried three sixteenths. It's too big for three sixteenths. It's too small and too loose for a quarter inch. So I believe it's seven thirty seconds. It will work. Just if you're going to go this route, make sure that you get a seven thirty seconds inch drill bit to make all your holes with. If you don't, then you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot, whatever. I just went myself, got quarter inch vinyl tubing, two and a half, three dollars, and you can use the quarter inch drill bit just like we've been showing. Consider yourself informed. Now back to the build. Little progress check in here. I just finished gluing all these guys down. Holes are in the right direction. It wasn't anything serious, so I didn't film it, but the caps are on caps are glued to the cups and then the underside is glued to the board pretty simple prior to that i cut the new tube and um, put the two and a half inch piece into the manifold and then went ahead and connected all of the valves so that's kind of drying just getting it to where a little sloppy there but like i said it was it wasn't going to be perfect on this one no way to get inside there and make it look nice. But it's going to work. Uh, the quarter inch diameter tubing works far better. You can actually feel it push in there nice and snug. I still think you need the silicone because you really want an airtight fit everywhere. Otherwise, you leak air and then you don't get as much power to the, uh, the cups themselves and your fluid bed won't work as efficiently as it could. So while we're waiting for that stuff to set up and dry a bit, I thought we'd take a second here to show you the paint cup um, assembly. So I had touched on this earlier. I wanna go ahead and show you a close up on it. So this is the two inch coupler. That's what we used to uh, trace out on our brown paper bag to get the right size filter. So once we have that, and no, no glue on any of this, right? Because you want to be able to replace these filters um, and you want to be able to switch out the paint and all that good stuff. So anyway, coupler goes down, filter goes right on top, should cover it just right. And just kind of holding that filter in place. I'm going to take the three inches of two inch PVC, right? Place it down on top. And then I'm just going to take a look around the edges to make sure that the same approximate amount is on all the edges. If I had a bunch on one side, not the other, then when I go to push it down, it's going to be uneven. So there we go. I think that's just about right. Once it all looks good and hold everything right to the top and just push straight down. Just like that. And that pushes the edges of that brown paper bag up and along the edge. Kind of give it a squeeze, nice and tight, all the way around, all right? And that will hold the paint 
and allow the air to flow up through in a controlled manner. After that, nice and easy, just kind of put the lid on and then pick your paint that you want to go in there. So here we are. We are really close. You can see we haven't uh, uh, screwed anything down yet, so we're not completely done yet. But this is what it looks like thus far. Looking really good. Uh, what I have to do now, and I mentioned a couple of times, I need to get in here and silicone around those holes, around those tubes rather, around the hole to uh, seal it up. Or once all that's done, and the last little piece before we screw these down, right, got the, the rubber on the inside to both help, help it hold in place as well as make up that little gap um, between this clip here as well and the, um, the PVC. We're, I'm going to twist this thing so you can see it's kind of got a bit of a wave to it like that, right? Um, but if I just twist it, see how they all just kind of sit down flat? Let's back up to the wave. So just twist it down. I'm twisting it down towards, right? So twist it down towards, pushes them all down nice and flat. And that's where we'll um, anchor it to the board. You know, I was just thinking if you wanted to take this to the next level, you could actually go to Lowe's and get like um, quarter inch inside grommets that you could then you need 16 of them so then in every hole right along the uh the manifold as well as along the cups you put the grommet in there and then the tube would go through the grommet so you'd have no silicone no mess that'd be pretty sweet and there it is all siliconed up ready to go Got it all hooked up. As I mentioned, I, I twisted it, I spun it so to flatten everything out. Um, and then got the rubber in between, keeping everything in place. You see a little bit of it right there. And nailed it down. So it happened to be the best place for it with all of these measurements, as I was hoping, was right on the edge, just like I had it mocked up. So two and a half inches, two and a half inches. Um, Overall, the valves and two inch cups, you can see there's little to no room in the back, just enough to kind of keep everything where it needs to be. So I need to let it sit overnight. Of course, for you guys, it's gonna be in just a few minutes or seconds even that you'll be able to see if it works, but I need to let it sit overnight and cure up all that silicone. And then we will test it out tomorrow and make sure that it works as well as I hope. I know I'm gonna be asked, so let's talk about my pump. So I run a Fluval Q2. This is, I believe, 50 to 160 gallon um, aquarium pump, and it's got the adjustment knob here that I can control the pressure um, for the whole system with that adjustment knob. I never thought that that would be as big a deal as it ended up being. So if you're in the market, when I bought this thing, I had to get it locally. It was 50 plus dollars, but I know you can get it online for like 35, 40 at the most, and it's worth every penny. So plenty of beef, plenty of horsepower to run four of these, no problem whatsoever. Whether or not it's going to be able to handle all eight at once, we shall see. We're definitely going to try it. But I don't need all eight of these to be going at once. This was a fun thing to do, and it was a convenience issue for me, like I mentioned at the beginning, to where I can put a bunch of paint on here and just turn the valves on that I want to have uh, on and leave the other ones closed down so all the pressure goes to those that are open. Once again, that is a Fluval Q2. Highly recommend it, it's been great, and uh, hopefully it'll work for you as well if you're looking for one. We've made it to day two. The silicone is all cured up. I've got the new unit behind me with um, eight different cups on here ready to go. We are going to test this thing out and see if she works. 
Fully expecting to get at least four cups going because that was the other design and why wouldn't it work on this one? If we can get any more than four, this is a win. But like I said before, even if it's only four, five, whatever, I can always turn one off, turn another one on, and have more than I need going at one time. So without further ado, let's see if she works. There she is, all set up. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the Fluval Q2 back in the back and get some air flowing. So the pump is on, it's all the way down, so I don't really have any pressure going in. I'm gonna go ahead and crack these first ones open. About two thirds of the way was normal on my old unit. So you can hear it kicked on. I like to give these a little tap. Get them loosened up and moving. Let's see. Yep. Got movement there. I like to keep the caps on as well until it's um, until it's all the way going, just so that I don't get powder paint everywhere. That sounds like max right there. Yep, you see the smoke. Color, not actual smoke. There's root beer, there's June bug, and there's plum. So let me give you guys a close up here. There you go, cranking right along, looking pretty good. So with that, now let's see if we can get a fifth going. I've got mango magic here. Um, oh, actually, that's a. I'm glad that happened. See how that's turned? Another beauty of these valves is um, you can just twist them. So if they ever get sideways, you can twist them. None of the uh, the seals break. They're sweet. So let me pop this one on. Now I'm expecting these. Yeah, see these are going down. Mango's coming up. So we may need to push these up to compensate because now the air is being shared by five cups, not four. That looks good. This one's good. And these are still bubbling right along. There's all five. So if nothing else, we have succeeded in increasing our fluid bed by one. That may be about it though because these guys are just about maxed out. I'm gonna go ahead and crank them all the way open, see what it does. Yeah, so that's wide open on the five, and all the way, max power on the, the, uh, pa the pump. So let's see if we can get anything out of black with blue flake. I think that might be it. You know what? I'm just going to open it wide open. It's moving, but these guys dropped significantly. Yeah, it's just barely rolling on those. So it appears that five is our sweet spot, which is pretty awesome because I can keep bringing that one back down, see what happens if we get, yeah, there they go. Right back up to where they were. So I can keep eight colors stored away. And then uh, as I want to swap back and forth, I can do five going at a time if we wanted to. Let's see here. This one's red bug. Let's turn smoke off and red bug on at the same time. So we still have five. Now one at the other end. Yep, there it is. So red bug is going now, and the others are going just fine too. You gotta love it when a plan comes together. I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thanks for coming along with me as we upgraded from four to eight. If I really wanted to, and I just had to have all eight or six or whatever going at the same time, I guess I could look for a bigger pump. I don't know, maybe one day. But I'm totally satisfied, happy to have done this with you. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, got some value out of it. 
As always, if you'd like to see more tips and tricks, lure building, whatever, then uh, check out this video right here. If you're curious why I call the channel SDG, then check out this video right here. Otherwise, until the next time, I'll see you guys at the Vice.